I don't really have a witty or smart intro for you today. I simply ran across the Cyanex and I thought to myself, hey, I forgot completely about this weapon. What can it do? And oh boy, it can do. So today, my friends, let's dive in deeper once again to the Cyanex, a mastery rank 8 secondary weapon. As per the usual, I'm gonna have a cheap build, something affordable for the more newer Tenno. But fear not, my veteran friends, we also got the end game set up. Prime mods, galvanized mods, we even got a ribbon for this one, we're gonna be taking it to Steel Path, put it through its spaces, see what it's capable of. That said, please bear in mind that my builds and guides always take a more new player friendly tone, simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, you can either skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Cyanex. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped, and for that, just a couple of our regular free shots. The Cyanex is a mastery rank 8 secondary weapon with some sentient goodness built into it, because you see this one can be fired in two fire modes. In primary fire mode, this one launches a projectile that locks onto target. Upon locking onto a target, it will hit it and then bounce to one additional target. Upon contact, this projectile will be generating a small half a meter explosion. However, the bounce itself is not going to be generating an additional explosion. Please don't be fooled by the procs of the gas element that create that cloud effect. That said, you see this lock-on feature? You see my point with it? It's a bit fuzzy in the sense that the projectile itself has a certain speed and it needs some time to lock onto your target. So there will be many times when it just simply ignores all the enemies within the pack and doesn't work and there will be other times which will, will work flawless so bear that one in mind that's your primary fire mode in secondary fire mode essentially this one is a bit of a pandero it's gonna be unloading the entire magazine in super rapid succession like so take a look at that how beautiful that is steady as a rock well not completely because you see the recoil on this one it does climb a little bit and then stabilizes so bear that one in mind when you're gonna be shooting something aim from the chest area depending on the distance between you and your target so you actually get to the head portion not that it's required this is not a critical weapon so therefore headshots are not mandatory but you will still be getting a benefit so still go for headshots if you can go for a headshot and if you don't know what i mean what's with this headshot multiplier what was with this whole location based multiplier i got your back click the cards right now back to the weapon itself that's pretty much it for functionality it is quite easy to use but the uptime isn't all that fantastic you're gonna be have to reload a whole lot with it it really depends on what kind of build you're gonna be going for the weapon are you gonna be going for the primary fire build or the secondary fire build because as you will see both of these have their own strength and weaknesses first of all accuracy is well it doesn't matter 1.8 because again it does lock on to targets the secondary fire mode does not lock on to targets and you're not getting that explosion so you only really need to properly aim in the secondary secondary fire mode fire rate is pretty good on this one 4.67 with a magazine and available noise alarming and a reload on 2.2 seconds which is definitely on the lengthy side and entirely pointless in my opinion riven disposition is going to be a three out of five essentially it is worth getting ribbons for this one careful of your rolls decide what kind of build you want before you roll your riven my recommendation as per the usual is to get something like multi-shot not critical chance not critical damage forget about that one for the time being go for multi-shot go for an element like toxin because that one is the most versatile depending on what you're going to be doing some flat damage isn't horrible either even the base critical multiplier is bad at 1.4x so even if you're going to be getting crit from outside sources such as arcane avenger it's still not worth getting critical damage or critical chance on the riven in my humblest of opinions trigger automatic Critical stats you already saw it's pretty bad but the status is sky high at 32 percent and the damage is going to be exclusively impact now that is the projectile making contact with said target and the explosion is the radial attack that is dealing 100 percent gas damage now take a look at the actual values most of your damage is going to be coming from the projectile making contact with a target but again this only applies to the primary fire mode in secondary fire mode you got different values altogether i want to tackle one mod really quick you're gonna say hey use it with hemorrhage that's a whole lot of impact i'm gonna be able to get slash on my targets like that you can try hemorrhage you can even increase the slash value with maim you're still not gonna be able to get a consistent amount of slash out of hemorrhage unless of course you're gonna be using the weapon exclusively in secondary fire mode but in that case you don't need hemorrhage anymore speaking about the secondary fire mode this one has different stats even though you have the same critical chance and critical multiplier this one has a whole lot of slash most of this damage is actually weighted into slash 
Though, granted, Puncture is a close second, so if you get a Riven with minus Puncture, that would be absolutely fantastic. Again, super high status, 32% with the garbage stat uh, critical chance and critical damage. And higher damage overall, you got 72. Though, keep in mind, you will be unloading the entire magazine. Now, let's check out a standard rudimentary everyday setup that is meant as a jumping off point for newer players coming into the game. What is that? Your mod capacity is 60 out of 60, but mine is only 30 out of 30. What gives? Jump into actions, plug in the auto king catalyst double that mod capacity is it worth it on the cyanax no let me explain why it's not if you're a newer player if you're mastery rank 8 trust me there are a lot of more powerful secondary weapons at this mastery rank like the cards right now for a full and detailed guide on a weapon that is definitely worth your time and resources not that the cyanax isn't worth it but it's worth it if you got certain mods if you're more towards the end game perspective and you know exactly what you need to do or you want to make this weapon into a primer and use arcane encumber something like that then sure but if not forget about it for now if you're looking for a secondary weapon that can deal damage at mastery rank 8 9 10 something like that with standard everyday mods this is not a weapon for you but if you must have it you're looking at a build like this you got damage multi-shot no critical chance no critical damage because of the garbage base stats you got a better fire rate with uh gunslinger we're also going to be using magnum force you got pistol pestilence convulsion and scorch ideally you would want to make the elemental combo with the 60 60 mods all of the 60 60 mods but the 60 60 electricity mod is called jolt and is only obtainable from battle kit here currently from the pc trade chat i saw it go for like 50 ish plat the price on this one depends on when Barakitir brought this one last. He brings the 66 electricity mods and when you see him bring this stuff you should definitely grab them because two are farmable from the game, the primary and the shotgun one, but the secondary one and the melee one are not farmable. And if you want to be in touch with Baro and what exactly he brings and when he brings them, don't forget to subscribe. Daddy's got you covered as per the Yash. So... Scorch is easy to get from spy missions if I remember correctly and the combination between corrosive and heat when it comes to heavily armored targets is definitely a smart idea. So let's test out the weapon and I'll be completely honest with you if I'm going to be hitting level 120 the weapon isn't really going to be looking all that hot but then again if you're mastery rank 8 are you realistically going to see corrupted heavy gunners level 120? The way I see it the only way you can see that if you're going to be going endurance which you shouldn't at mastery rank 8 Unless, of course, it's an alternative account or something like that. Or, or if you're doing sortie free and you decide to stay a while in it. Then again, I'm not sure if at MR8 you even know what sortie is. So what we're going to be doing is spawning something a bit more level appropriate. And for MR8, in my opinion, 50 is something a bit more appropriate. So let's see what the weapon can do with a build such as this. We're going to be using it both in primary and secondary. Again, this is a baseline. Yes, this is what it can do against normal level targets which is what these are the weapon can deal a truck ton of damage and it's extremely extremely easy to use ammunition issues however can be a thing depending on how many targets you have how much fire rate you build on the weapon and how much do you enjoy spamming but honestly this can definitely kill when it comes to normal level targets or at least something that i believe to be appropriate for mastery rank 8 secondary fire mode secondary fire mode i don't know if you caught this in the stats but also has half a meter worth of punch rule so you can blow up targets like so the honest truth is that the more powerful fire mode is the secondary fire mode but the more fun fire mode is the primary fire mode this concludes the new player portion of the guide if you're more of a newer tenno i believe there are better secondary options than this one if you're looking for something that deals the damage but hey the cyanex can work as well now if you're a veteran you have two options you can either build this one for its primary fire mode and you're looking at something like this with secondary encumber or you can make it into a primer then again if you're going to be making this one into a primer why not just make a cycron into a primer or a new core or better yet the epitaph i don't think it's really worth using in my opinion if you want to legitimately deal damage with this one you gotta build it for its secondary fire mode and you gotta go for that slash which is why we're going to be using carnage stinger and main the point here is to bring up that slash value another thing that you can do is use unranked frostbite and pistol pestilence this is an old veteran trick that well, better know about you use only one marked up or no marked up so you can get that vital value down you don't need a gazillion vital procs but the problem with that it's an inherent trade because you are bringing the status chance of the weapon down so therefore you are going to be applying less statuses to the target and you are only using the weapon itself and its own status chance and values to apply status to the target so you see while you're helping yourself on one hand you're shooting yourself in the foot on the other 
it's really up to you. In my opinion, it is not worth it in this case. Galvanized Diffusion and Galvanized Shot. Let's talk about Galvanized Shot. Galvanized Shot will not be applying its damage benefit to the explosion of the primary fire mode. However, that does not matter because we are building right now exclusively for the secondary fire mode. Ideally for the build, you would also use something like this. I know you don't enjoy faction mod, I find them disgusting as well, but if you don't have a problem with faction mods, you should definitely go for a faction mod on this one, since we're going to be using a whole lot of procs to take out our target. So definitely go for prime expel, whatever, corrupted, green ear, and so on and so forth. If not, you can go for the flat damage of hornet strike now let's test out the weapon like so and then we're going to introduce a riven into the mix the reason why i'm not showing a riven from the get-go is because i know like not all of you have rivens we're going to be changing up the story however we're going to level 165 and we're also going to be enabling the steel path modifiers because this is a end game setup honestly these are some rather nasty tough targets a big difference between the level 50 normal ones and again just for secondary fire mode now, in order to get this build going, since it's a galvanized setup with primary merciless and all uh, secondary merciless, you're gonna have to get a couple of kills on your target. So let's get a kill to get some more flat damage. Now we got a bit more flat damage. Look at that. 17 slashes with 6 vitals. So you can actually use the weapon to kill your high level targets. Not only that, the more stacks you get, the more crazy this one will get. It's gonna be able to completely annihilate the health bar like so. Look at that. Two targets at once, because if I'm fighting like this, I'm able to use that half a meter worth of punch through, which you can use with a clump up ability, something like Kora. It doesn't really work so well with um, Nidus' thing, because of the ragdolling effect, but with Kora's thing, actually I'm just gonna show you, it's better than just talking about it. Ideally, if you're gonna be using Ensnare, which you can get from the helmet, you're gonna be able to one-shot these guys a whole lot easier. Take a look at that. And that was like, what, half the bullets landing in the target. Always got to keep in mind that recoil. You can also reformat the weapon one more time and put minus recoil in the extra slot, obviously. So let's pick up Kora for a second. Let's do a little bit of a synergy, not too much of a synergy. Yes, with her and snare. Put them all together with ensnare. Try to make the best use you can out of that punch rune. Now you can build even more punch rune on the weapon. The problem with that is there's really not a whole lot of room on the build at this point. What exactly are you going to be sacrificing for that punch rune? And it's a high drain as well. You're looking at 15. If you can get it on Riven, that would actually be quite nice. If you can get a little bit of punch rune, so this one would work a bit better. So if you want something like a synergy, you can go for something like this. Again, get a grouping ability and use that half a meter worth of punch to apply procs to the entire group and watch them die. Benari also helps, but not that much. But of course, we can push the weapon even further. And for that, we're going to have to access the power of a Riven mod. How much does a Cyanax, a Cyanax Riven cost nowadays? I think it was something like 30 plat unrolled, so you can get one yourself. Take a look at this one. Multi-shot damage minus impact. I would have preferred... Minus puncture as long as I'm building for that slash, but minus impact isn't horrible either. More flat damage, which I don't really need, but it is usable at the end of the day. What am I dropping? You can drop lethal torrent and go for something like so. We're going to be three testing the weapon so you can see uh, what a Riven Disposition free can do to the weapon. Because it does make quite the noticeable difference. And the primary reason is that uh, that multi-shot and the flat damage as well, but mostly that. Again, we're going to have to rebuild it. Look at that. Because of the extra flood damage from the Riven, I don't need to wait for a couple of stacks or anything of the sort. The weapon kills from the get-go. So you see, my friends, flat damage is not something to be shunned, necessarily. You still need a whole lot of flat damage on the build, but more than two sources, usually, of flat damage, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go for it. Back to the Cyanax. Look at that. Look at that. I got two kills that time, baby. So essentially halfway through the shot, I switched to another target. Now what you can do is shoot guy, roll. And you stopped the fire. You can take this approach if you want to. So even though the weapon can't be stopped, you can technically stop it if you roll. So if you do this, you stopped and you still got 5 out of the 11 bullets. See that? So you can kill multiple targets if you must. Obviously the weapon absolutely destroys now, look at that. Still, 165 Corrupted Heavy Goons with the Steel Path modifier on. So that looks, at least to me, pretty impressive for a single target damage weapon. Not counting the built-in punch through that it has as quote-unquote AoE. But let's head on over to the Path of Steel and see how this one handles in a actual gameplay environment. Is Tenshin Khan from Dragon Ball Z. Dragon, Dragon, Dragon. 
Dragon, Dragon, Dragon Ball Z. Welcome to the void, my friends. Now let's see what a weapon can do against an actual Steel Path mission. Enemies. Oh, there we go. We got enemies. Fantastic. Now we're going to be using Citrine, and I'm going to be using her entire arsenal of buffs. Even her four ability that is going to be applying crowd control to my enemies. But that is like not the most important thing here. The most important thing is seeing what exactly can the weapon do. And as you can see, as long as I point at something, it gets deleted. My problem, obviously... Oh wow, crits, hold on. You can build some crit damage on it if you're going to be building with Citrine, obviously. Because you're going to get level 3 crits when you hit the crystals. You see 1.3 million something. And this without any crit damage built on the weapon whatsoever. Though do bear in mind, you're still gonna have to deal with that horrible base crit damage of the weapon, so that is that. With Citrine, however, it is viable to somewhat play with crit if you want to. Not that the weapon needs it, we can melt whatever stands before it. The problem is, using the secondary fire mode exclusively, I'm consistently reloading, recharging, so the uptime isn't all that fantastic. That does not mean that the weapon does not end, quote unquote, slap. But it is a little bit annoying in actual gameplay, especially considering that there are tons of other secondary weapons that are much easier and more forthcoming when it comes to their overall gameplay performance and experience as well. But that's not important. What is important? I'm killing these guys. Yeah, killing these guys. You can also use a clump of ability like Gora's thing if you want to. I just enjoy Citrine as she is. She is becoming one of my most favorite warframes in the game. And I believe she is one of the most, if not the most powerful support right now. I know you want to see the guide. You want to see the proof. Where's the proof? Playing the cards right now. Here you go. Primary fire mode. See that? I'm not using secondary. You can use the primary fire mode. It's still killing stuff. Thank you, Gas Prox. And it's bouncing nicely between targets. So here you got a group of enemies. Use your primary fire mode. Though, keep in mind, in this fire mode right now, all that slash that I put on the weapon, like Carnage Stinger. Carnage Stinger is half useless. And Maim is completely useless because the primary fire mode has no slash whatsoever. But you can still kill stuff. Yes, you can still kill stuff if you feel like not unloading the entire magazine on a pack of enemies. Or if you want to prime them with some gas. What do you know? It's violence. Violence has come to be slain. Okay, so violence is here somewhere. There, here, there you go. I'm gonna shoot violence. I freeze them with my citrine thing. And now I'm gonna shoot him in the crystal. Or not in the crystal. And he's dead. Now I know what you're gonna say. Dude, you apply crowd control him. Yes, yes I did. Yes I did, because I can. And why wouldn't I? I have the Warframe to do so. But I didn't hit him in the crystal, so it didn't get the crit on it. Honestly, it can deal with an Acolyte fine. It's not one of the best weapons to deal with. An Acolyte is not going to one-shot it without any Warframe buffs or something like that. If you're looking for a secondary weapon that can legitimately blow up an Acolyte in a nanosecond, look at the cards right now. It's a secondary weapon, believe it or not. Now, I do believe that's pretty much it. Let's draw some conclusions regarding this fantastic secondary weapon. For a Mastery Rank 8 weapon, I believe it holds its own quite nicely. It can be used as a primer if you want to. You can get some damage out of its primary fire mode, but I believe its strength, the most amount of damage can come from its secondary fire mode if you want to leverage that slash. Now, obviously, the weapon can be built in a number of different ways, and if you found another way that works for you, fantastic. Let me know in the comment section down below. But, as always, my name is Malazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. And also, you should check out my brand new channel, Texar. But I do what I do, kind of what I normally do, but only for tech things and stuff. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.